All right, let's talk about object relationships, parent-child relationships in Salesforce. We use lookups and master details for these. Let's take a quick look at how these play out. So the easiest one that we all know is accounts and contacts. An account may have many contacts. And in this diagram, we're going to show the arrow to the parent and the fork to the child. And that just stands for one to many. And every time we create a lookup, we get this one-to-many relationship. We can ask the account about how many children it has, but we can't ask a specific piece of information about one, right? We can't ask an account, what is your contact's first name? The follow-up question would have to be, well, which contact? However, we can do something interesting in the opposite direction. When it comes to asking about a parent information, we have direct access to it. So if we wanted to, say, put a formula field on the contact to pull down some account information, we can do that because the contact is only going to ever have the one account uh, in this particular relationship. So that's one thing to note. Another thing here is that we have two types of relationships in Salesforce. We have lookup and we have master detail. A lookup relationship is more basic. It just says that uh, the child declares a lookup to the parent and, and it builds this, this bridge here. If you do it as a master detail, it does a couple of other things. A master detail says that the child cannot exist without the parent. So it's a, it's a stronger relationship. A master detail also allows you to do other things like roll up summaries on the, on the parent object. The parent object now has access to this new field type called a roll up summary or can do things like uh, count the child object, summarize information from fields in a child object, and other kinds of roll-up aggregations, where a regular lookup cannot do that. Master detail relationships also, uh, in the child object, they inherit ownership from the parent object. So they don't actually get their own owner IDs uh, in the child object. So there's some, you want to be careful with those. There's other limitations around those, but those are the two types of relationship fields that you can create, lookups and master details. Now, when you're creating these fields, a lot of us are so used to going, hitting the next button when we create new fields in Salesforce. I'm, I'm sure we're all familiar with this, but I wanted to pause on one of the places in a master detail or a lookup relationship that actually has some information in it that tells us how to do things like writing queries, uh, finding information in queries, and finding information in reports, um, specifically building report types, and accessing that information in the right way. So I'm going to switch over to my screen for a second and set this up. OK, so I'm over here in my dev org, and I'm going to quickly create a new custom object called project, something that we're going to relate to accounts pretty generically. So I'm building my custom project object, and I'm going to save it. And we'll start adding some fields. And the, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a lookup to account. So account can have many projects. And I'm going to name this field account. And you'll see here the child relationship name is projects. So this is something that not everybody knows what this is, but this is actually how an account can refer to its child project objects, to its child object records. So the account even though on the, we're defining the field on the project object, it says, that is my account, a lookup to account. We're also, at the same time, defining the reciprocal child relationship name of how that account is going to refer to its project. And you can see right here, the child relationship name is projects. When we click Next, we get our field level security. We'll skip that for, for this. And we get our page layout, which we'll jump over for now. But we get one other uh, name that we ask that, it, that Salesforce lets us define here that's also uh, defaulted. And it's our related list label. And this is also how uh, these child records are going to be called 
uh, in the UI. So when you say when projects show up on an account page layout in a related list, they're going to be called projects by default. I can call them something else. I can overwrite this if I want to, but you'll see right now the child relationship name and the related list label is the same. So I'm gonna just change the related list label just so that we can see the difference between the two and how they play out. So I'm gonna call it projects list and save. Let's go to our accounts. So I'll create a custom account And we see our list of projects now in our custom account. It says projects list, just the way I typed it in the related list uh, label. But the child relationships name still means something, and that has to do with uh, queries. The, now the related list also has um, other meanings beyond just the related list. It's also the name which reports are going to refer to this object. Um, so if you wanted to do an account with its projects, you're probably going to see in your report type builder account with project lists. So that's how that's going else. That's another way that this is going to show up. Now let's take a look quickly at the child relationship name and how that plays out. I'm going to jump back to the whiteboard for that. Okay. So now we've created our new projects object. So I'm just going to add that to the diagram here. We have our project object. It also has a one-to-many from account. And we called this field, remember each of these relationships is a lookup field and we named this field account. But we also allowed the account to have a child relationship name back and that's called projects. And you can see that's in the, in the plural projects. So the projects is really how the account refers to its child projects. And where does this matter? Where does this play in? Because clearly this isn't the name of the related list. So the way this matters is when we're writing queries. If we say wanted to get accounts and all of their projects in a single query, we could do it in a couple of ways. We could query projects and do and, and join in the account information, right? I can do select ID, name, account ID, or account C, account.name, account.website, and pull that all into the project query. But what if I wanted to be even more organized and get accounts and their child projects grouped under those accounts? So that is where a subquery would come in handy. A subquery would look like this. So I'm going to take the ID and the name from the account object, but now as another field, I'm going to write a subquery and it shows up in parentheses with a select ID and name from, and here's where the child relationship name comes into play projects. But one thing that the UI didn't show you that you have to know is you need a double underscore R at the end of your child relationship name for this to work properly. And this we treat as a whole field in our BigQuery and we say from, whoops, from account and of course we could add where something is true, but uh, to summarize this, we can use this project relationship and this will actually give us accounts, the ID, the name, and a list of the projects that belong to each account. So we have their accounts with their projects or we could have an account with all of its contacts. As opposed to the other way, which is to start with the child object which would look a bit different and it would also give some different results. We could have gotten the same data by querying projects and account.id and account.name, but we wouldn't have had the projects grouped by their accounts. Okay, it would have been 
tabular format. So I just want to give another example with accounts and contacts, since everybody knows accounts and contacts, the same thing would look like uh, a little bit different just because these are standard objects and not custom objects. We had the double underscore R because it's a custom object. Here we would do select. Again, I'll keep it simple, just idea name. We comma again because the subquery is treated as a field. And we say select. I'll just do ID, uh, first name, from contacts. So notice I'm using contacts in plural because I'm using the child relationship to account in this subquery. And then we still finish the outer query from account. Notice not accounts, but account. And this would give us every account with each of its contacts. And that's how you use the child relationship field uh, when you're building lookups in Salesforce. Uh, this is a great way to use that to your advantage. Yeah, if you're looking to figure out why, um, if, if you have a lot of lookups to the same object, so if we have many, say, lookups to account from contact or from project or even from opportunity, sometimes you have lots of other accounts that serve different purposes and an opportunity that you need to bring in, and you're not sure which child relationship to use to bring in the right information, you can always go back to that lookup, find that piece of metadata called child relationship name on the lookup, and that'll give you your answer. If you want to know more about us or any of these topics, please subscribe to our channel or contact us directly through our website at leadsource.com.